unipolarity is coming to an end. The last 30 years was the unrivaled dominance of Atlanticist power and US hegemony. The last major rival to the Atlanticist power bloc had just been dissolved, leaving the entire world open to American influence and subversion. It was open season as Washington saw an opportunity to claim the entire planet and create a new world order. Not that this was a new idea. Atlanticist think tanks have been pushing for control over the whole world and the establishment of a one world government for over a hundred years. But there were always major obstacles such as other power blocks, including Austria-Hungary, Germany, Japan, and of course, the USSR. With their elimination, it appeared nothing could stand in the way of a Washington and Tel Aviv-led global superstate. They wasted no time in getting to work on this. All they needed was to scoop up the former Soviet satellite states and rein in any stragglers in the global south through soft or hard power, whichever works best. NATO and the EU were able to claim most of Eastern and Central Europe. The former Yugoslavia was balkanized and subjected to war and destruction engineered by Washington and, of course, Tel Aviv. Iraq, Sudan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, Nigeria, all these places underwent regime change. Some accepted this without war, while others suffered from Washington-sponsored terrorism through various groups such as ISIS, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Boko Haram, in order to strong-arm these countries into submission. By 2012, it seemed inevitable that the world would fall to globalism, as only a handful of countries remained, namely Iran, Belarus, Venezuela, North Korea, Russia, Serbia, and Syria, which was fighting for its life. China appeared to be on board with the globalists, but a new alliance was quietly being assembled. In 2009, Russia, China, India, Brazil, and South Africa got together and formed a new power block known as BRICS as they signed various agreements and trade deals. At this time, the Atlanticists paid little attention as they were preoccupied with their never-ending wars and the installation of puppet regimes in the last remaining territories on Earth. And by 2016, they were perhaps 90% done with their globalist project of total world domination. The end was in sight. They could taste victory it was so close. They were so confident, they were even openly insulting their own people. But then, something happened. Then a few more things happened. Something was terribly wrong. They overplayed their hand. They dropped the ball. The mask had slipped. The curtains had been pulled a little too soon. But it was too late. The toothpaste had been pushed out, and there was no way to put it back in the tube. So first came massive media smearing campaigns. That didn't work. Then came censorship. That didn't work. Then the introduction of revised hate speech laws, resulting in people getting arrested for speaking. That didn't work. So they brought out the big guns. The ruling class of elites were furious with our disobedience, so it was time for severe punishment. Two years of house arrest followed as we were made prisoners in our own homes with endless lockdowns and face diapers. The Ministry of Information machine went into overdrive as it hammered out a global campaign of fear-mongering, working with law enforcement as they terrorized the general population taking full advantage of the fear-ridden, gullible, demoralized, and weakened population, they brought their next phase of operations. Despite all the damage caused, this too failed, as the uptake rate was much lower than expected or reported. Still, the pharmaceuticals and P50 
PPE manufacturers made money hand over fist. It was time for something new. A war. The weapons manufacturers wanted a piece of the pie, and Russia needed to be taken down. Russia was never fully destroyed or co-opted, much to the frustration of the Atlanticists, who have been trying to do this for over a hundred years. Russia has suffered a turbulent history and has been battered and bruised, yet it remains strong and robust. I would argue their orthodox Christianity is what gives them this stoicism and unrivaled strength. They pushed out the German invasion of World War II, shook off Jewish Bolshevism, they then dissolved communism, and finally kicked out the last remaining parasites in the 1990s. As this war drags on, past the six-month mark, things are going from bad to worse to utterly disastrous for the collective West led by Washington and Tel Aviv, and not for the same reasons as the general population. The cost of living is the least of their concerns. In fact, they are no doubt pleased that we are all suffering this sharp decline in living standards. They are happy to see us having to pay through the nose for basic living essentials. Remember, the government is not your friend. I keep having to remind people of this despite the overwhelming evidence. It's like they have Stockholm Syndrome. No, they are dismayed with Russia's economic resilience and military victories. But what is disturbing the globalist ruling class the most is the fact that the world outside of the collective West is turning their back on American hegemony. The global South now has options for the first time ever. Previously, they had two choices. Allow America to pillage your country in exchange for IMF loans or starve and get bombed back to the Stone Age with humanitarian invasions and bombs of peace. So not much of a choice really. Countries are getting in line to join the new power block. BRICS is replacing the collective West and is poised to replace the NWO as big players such as Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Argentina, and Egypt apply for membership. As the balance of power returns to some kind of bipolarity or even multipolarity, the globalist fantasy of a one world government is evaporating fast. The USA will no longer be the global hegemon. The petrodollar will cease to exist and Western Europe will become heavily reliant on North America for all of its commodity needs unless they can break with Washington and somehow patch things up with Russia. But this is very unlikely with such weak and hopelessly brainwashed populations they will simply fall to American neo-colonialism, as Europe will be the only place available to colonize. The world is changing, and this raises many new questions. Will Europe fall under the boot of America? Will America be able to protect Israel? I hope not. Watching the Arab world steamroll Israel would be a delight. What will replace the petrodollar? Will this transition be more or less peaceful? Will there be an all-out war? Will the world be a better place? Yes, I definitely think so. We will find out the answers very soon, I suspect. Until next time. Thanks for watching.